how did I ask her to be my wife? Today, I'm going to get a little personal with you. I hope Kennedy doesn't mind, so buckle up and get ready for this proposal story. All right, today I just feel like getting a little personal with you guys. This is not really about health and fitness, although there are some lessons that you can learn from it and apply to health and fitness. But this one's about my personal life and my relationship with my now fiance, future wife, Kennedy. When we first started dating, and by the way, she does not know that I'm recording this podcast. I'll probably tell her when it comes out. And so if you're listening to this, sorry I didn't ask you in advance, but here we go. But when we first started dating, both her and I would agree that it was good and we had a good time, but there wasn't like sparks flying immediately. It wasn't some fairy tale movie where right away, you know that this is the one that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. And I'm sure that sometimes does happen, but I feel like more often than not, that's really not the case. And some people might just be trying to convince themselves that it is the case just so they have this fairy tale aura around their relationships. But I'm not going to lie with you. But then we continued to date and we always got along. We always wanted to be around each other. At least I know I did. And we never got into any arguments and we really still don't. But fast forward a year and I knew. I knew maybe before a year, but I definitely knew at that one year mark that she was the one. There was no one particular moment when it hit me that this is definitely the girl that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. I feel like it was more just a gradual, more of a natural process. But I just remember one day before our kind of one year anniversary thinking about it. And I was like, yeah, I think she's definitely the one. Or I don't think she's definitely the one. She is definitely the one that I'm going to marry. And so the planning began in April of 2023 at the time of our one year anniversary, the month of our one year anniversary, I told my brother that I was going to marry her a couple weeks later. I told my sister and then I once again told my parents and I'm going to tell you what, when your family loves your significant other, like my family loves Kennedy telling them like having the opportunity to tell them it wasn't face to face, but it was FaceTime to FaceTime telling them that you're going to ask her to marry you is one of these most special moments that I've ever had in my entire life. And I will completely cherish and always remember telling my brother, telling my sister, seeing my parents' face when I told them and seeing it, their faces absolutely light up. This is something that I will never forget. And it was just one of the most special moments of my entire life, to be honest with you. Um, now, unfortunately, in order to get everybody's calendars aligned, I wasn't going to be able to ask her until October. 2023. So if you do the quick math in your head, that's a solid six months where I had to keep it inside of me and hide it from Kennedy. And holy smokes, when you have something that big that you really want the other person to know, it's damn tough to keep it quiet. But in the meantime, I was really strict with myself about not bringing up marriage with her. This is something that she'd be like, oh my gosh, she's actually talking about this. Yeah, I am. Now, I don't think that's necessarily the right or the wrong approach to talk about marriage or to not talk about marriage before you actually get engaged. I'm just saying that this was my approach and my reasoning for it was because I felt like we were already on the same page. I felt like she knew how I felt about her and I knew how she felt about me. And if I brought up marriage in advance, it almost would feel like I was asking in advance. Like it would almost feel like a safety net. Like I was asking for a yes before the actual yes. Like it was going to give me some confidence booster before I took a knee. I think it's one of those things where I wanted to have the courage to take the knee, not necessarily knowing whether or not she was going to say yes. I mean, I felt like I knew she was going to say yes, but I didn't want to ask her in advance if she was going to say yes. So again, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. Lord knows I'm no relationship expert. I'm just sharing how I approached it and the intentionality that I approached it with. So after that, I needed to decide where and how I was going to do this thing. Before I selected where, I wanted to come up with some criteria before I nailed it down. I wanted to do, and a few criteria were this. I wanted to do it someplace that we could always go back to. I wanted to do it somewhere that had meaning to us. I wanted to do it alone with her, besides having a photographer and videographer there that were hiding before the actual moment. And then I really wanted to be able to share that moment with her, just the two of us, for a little while after. So once I came up with the, those criteria, figuring out the location was easy for me. So that day we went on a five, we went to a 5 a.m. workout together that morning. Then we went and got coffee, and then we went on a walk. 
15 minutes into the walk, I popped the question. Those 15 minutes, whoo, I just had to try to stay calm and breathe and try to stay as present in the moment in our conversation as possible to not feel like I was acting weird. So 15 minutes into the walk, I popped the question, completely catching her off guard, which is my whole goal. And then we still had like 30 minutes left in the walk to talk about everything afterwards. And that to me was one of the best parts to be able to have just 30 minutes, us two getting to walk together and her asking me a bunch of questions about, oh my gosh, like what? Give me details and everything like that. But I planned so much of this in advance because I wanted this to be a special moment. I wanted it to be a special weekend. And I wanted it to be something that we all looked back on and cherished and just thought it was the best day, moment, and weekend ever. I mean, I planned the time, the day, how to keep it a secret from everyone, what I was going to say to her in the moment, and a lot more. Now, again, why am I sharing this? Why am I making a podcast episode about this? I think partly, to be honest, is because I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I mean, I have no shame in saying that. I think a lot of guys wing it and don't prepare when it comes to their proposal and when it comes to their engagement. And those of you guys who know me or have been following me for a while, you know that's the last thing that I would do is not prepare and not have too much thought or intentionality behind it. And again, I'm not saying that is right or wrong. I know everyone, everybody is different and every relationship is different. But I know that all the intentionality, thought, and preparation that I put into it made that moment, made that day, and made that weekend so much more meaningful for me, and I hope and I think for her as well. I just think that preparation in all areas of life brings confidence into any given moment, and it allows you to be present in any given moment. I mean, I know that before I proposed, a lot of people had talked about how in that moment when they took a knee or right before they took a knee, they had no idea what they said. They People were like, I blocked out during that moment and I had no idea what I said. And I was like, I know that's not going to be me. And I know people since me asking her have asked me, you probably have no idea what you said to her, did you? And I was like, um, no, like I know exactly what I said. I know exactly where on the bridge we were when I asked her. I know everything because I was prepared and I had it well thought out. Preparation in all areas of life will t make things turn out better than if you didn't prepare. And thank God she said yes. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, a lot different than what I normally do. Kennedy, sorry for not asking you in advance. Some of you guys know me. Some of you guys know Kennedy. Some of you know both of us. If you don't know either of us, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, Man, I'm excited. I am so excited for this next stage and, and chapter of life. And I hope you're excited about the next stage and chapter of your life, especially if you plan on joining the January 22nd 10-week transformation. It's not quite released and open for registration yet, but it's coming very soon. So make sure you get your butt ready so you can get ready for 2024 in the best way possible. In the meantime, if you want a little kickstart and motivation, if you want a little kickstart in your fitness routine, then join the one-week free trial of the virtual 10-week transformation by going to nickcarrier.com slash free trial. Again, nickcarrier.com slash free trial. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I hope you go out there and continue to take action so you can get closer and closer to your best you.